Eat the churros. This, the little screen back here turned off on my this episode of Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use offer code UNTITLED. Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I am Adam. And I am Norm. Oh, you didn't tell me we weren't doing contractions, guys. <laughs> I am so say we are. I am Will. That's not awkward. I am Will, I am. So we were talking about our long history of churro-related humor here. Yeah, I didn't know. It was a, my, son is just, my son just went out to buy some churros for us, and you said there's churro-related humor. Also, aside from the fact that it's slightly penis-shaped... Whoa. Is Whoa. That, is that, I never noticed, that's a, that's but like a, thanks. It's like a duck... Like, <laughs> I mean, tr- churros are it's weird. They're, 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 they're ridgy. Sorry, I don't know what weird yeah. anatomy. <laughs> that's unusual. But um, what what, ta- what what flavor of churro related humor have you indulged in? Thus far? I can't remember. I I remember at one point we needed an excuse to drive around town for a video to test something stupid like 3D data speeds or something. We were like, let's go find a churro. And you know, it's surprisingly hard to find a churro in San Francisco outside of the mission. If you right. I mean, yeah. yes. if you come to a real taqueria, no problem. Right. Yeah. But if you go to one of the other taquerias anywhere else throughout the city, nobody has churros. And there's Costco no churros. Has churros? Costco. Uh, Target Costco. has churros. Target has churros? Tar- Target. Target, does, Target has churros. I'm I don't sorry, know. But I don't want to tar- Target churros. You know, churro. uh, back in 96, 97, my first wife and I were living in the mission around 23rd in Valencia. Something's. Right in the middle of it all. Yeah. And she worked in Palo Alto. And at one point, she called me up. And she was like, I'm on my way home. Do you want some dinner? And I said, yeah, pick me up a burrito. And she brought me a burrito. And when she brought it in, I said, "There, we must have violated some law for you to have brought a burrito from a mall in Palo Alto into the Mission District. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, hold on. Was it Chipotle? No. Oh, no, okay. That's earlier. good. This is 96. So this is like, yeah, from some oh. crappy mall place. Into the mission. Yeah. People don't know. People in the mission don't know how lucky they are to oh, have God. the mission burrito. Totally. Like around the country, you can't get burritos. No, it's, it's going out. It's getting out. Thanks My to parents. Chipotle. No, no. And it, fuck Chipotle, man. I want <laughs> nothing to do with that white rice. And white, no, white rice has no place in burritos. <laughs> um, my parents, there's a gas station. They're showing up in gas stations around the country. So, really? like, there's a gas station by my parents in Northern Virginia where there's a family that opened up a gas station and they make mission style burritos there right. that would be like mid level here, yeah. probably. Okay. Pretty good. So, you know, a few years ago, Calvin Trillin, who's written a lot of wonderful books about food as well as other subjects, uh, has a daughter who lives in Noe Valley. And so he wrote a New Yorker article about the art of the burrito in mm. the Mission District in San Francisco. Uh. Now, he covered a lot of the classic places like La Cumbre and Pancho Villa. Yeah. And I say, the hell with those places, by the way. Let me just explain. What every real chef in San Francisco knows is that the only excellent, truly over-the-top I, burrito in San Francisco... Hold on, I'm going to have to bleep all this out because I don't want anybody to know. ...comes from... It's not Are in there. Bleep it? I'm not going to put it in there. <laughs> There's no way. They're open. It's late. bad enough. It's, it's hard enough to get in there now. We're not going to make it any worse. Okay, I guess it's bleep. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I might, I might have a sudden, unpredictable change of heart. All right, all right. The food uh, truck it, burrito also is, is, is a wonderful thing. I totally agree. I totally agree. I also particularly love the salsa at uh, uh, Papalote. Hmm. Oh, their burritos are fine. Their super grilled chicken quesadillas are great. A good salsa goes a long way. Their salsa is, I think, I think they must make it by by roasting everything, because mm. everything has this little smoky back taste that's just phenomenal. Is it, is it like a real ground, like a like a pureed almost? Yeah, it is a okay. pureed type of type of uh, salsa, and it's just it, it is it is one of my all time favorite salsas. That and the salsa verde at El Farolito. But salsa the, the, that salsa verde is just like the whole El Farolito experience. 
Not that from you guys could hear what we just rack, said. The painting of the rack of lamb. That's what we'll tell you. You can bleep the name, but I'll tell yeah. you. This place is open late, like till 4 a.m., mm-hmm. and in the back is a oil painting really, of, they're one open of, that those, one of those uh, souvlaki racks of, of lamb or pork that rides yeah. in a metal machine. They there's slice, a name for that. Off. I, can't, I, I know there's a name yeah. for it. It's I probably no the first comment. Pro- yeah, almost <laughs> certainly. <laughs> look, look below. Speaking of comments. Oh, man, um, that was excellent. Do you like that? that I, I saw it coming. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, don't, the first comment is probably that I'm a jerk. <laughs> right, yes. No, the first comment is first. Sometimes, but sometimes it's somebody saying, oh, you, you oh, get first. Oh, first? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's that. been the first comment on, on the internet since Slashdot was invented. <laughs> like, at the beginning, they had to build a whole new set of moderation rules to right. prevent people from saying first. And yeah, there are whole, the whole, uh, whole, whole algorithms that detect... What the first comment is, and then change words based on what the anticipated wow. comment is. Wow! So, so uh, the last, top, yeah. So last week, Popular Science, um, maybe a few weeks ago by now. Yes. Was that, is it a few weeks ago? Well, this will be. Okay, we're so we're recording late, this from I'm the distant past. No, no, no. This. Oh, it's right. a la- it's a there few week, week last week for us. Got it. But maybe a few weeks ago for by people. the time this I might airs. post this one next week, which is going to really confuse people when I disappear again <laughs> two weeks from now. The, but anyway, the venerable hundred and some forty-four year old, hundred and forty-four year old institution of popular science, Pop has, Sci, Pop Sci, yeah. has removed comments from their online articles, and they've stated that they have some science to back up the idea that mm-hmm. comments actually inhibit their ability to promote scientific debate and scientific thought. Well, it was that it was. I think the the specific thing that they said was that there's been some data that shows that negative. Ad hominem attacks and commentary. Mm, it wasn't even that. It was just it was just the 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 battle against science that happens in comments in a kind of organized way. Right, um, has scientifically shown been scientifically shown to change people's opinions yes. about the things that are being said in the Except articles. Except that it doesn't, because that's not what the study says at all. Right. That's the. This is the no, where it all I, breaks I, so down. So after I tweeted the article that I'd found about Popsay, I tweeted the rebuttal mm-hmm. uh, that the article doesn't say that. But after reading their analysis, I'm not convinced. Well, first of all, well, let's say what the study said. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the study was on. Uh, it was. It took a, a sample of, of uh, commenters, and it was an article on nanotechnology. Right. And, and it was they, a fake article. Right. And right. they and they uh, they put. Two sets of comments in front of the subjects, one very pro and one very anti. Right. And they and they studied whether that had an effect. And they said the anti comments definitely had an effect. Um, but, uh, on people's understanding uh, of the pro, of the original, but only on people who already had a bias. So it makes the people who are arguing in the comments biased. more yes. likely to think that they're right. And it wasn't on a topic that was necessarily predisposed to bias. Issue. Okay, so I would say I would say. Number one, I tend to give people the benefit of the doubt. I tend to assume that the people running Pop Sci are very smart. I have generally worked in the past with popular mechanics. We mm-hmm. have Jamie and I have a long history with writing for them, so we haven't worked with Pop Sci very so much. They're natural nemeses. No, they're not. They're not at all. I'm assuming <laughs> that they're smart, and I'm assuming that they've read this study, and I'm assuming they've made conclusions based on what they read, not on something that they misinterpreted. Sure. And I would think that actually finding out that ad hominem attacks and super negative comments polarize people further is absolutely a reasonable reason to want to limit commentary um oh. so, Go ahead. Yeah, so sorry i want to read the actual study that's the next stage that i would like to do but you know i do see that uh, the other thing they said in the popular in the pop sci press release was um unfortunately things that are already decided get re-debated constantly in the comment section like evolution and global warming and i could imagine being at the head of a science magazine thinking jesus christ when will these nut jobs i'm talking to you nut jobs stop coming out of the woodwork and denying evolution and anthropogenic warming <laughs> so that is the right term anthropogenic right people caused <laughs> global yes. warming yes. yeah yeah okay um so Here's, but here's the other thing, is that they're saying, hey, the comments on our site are so toxic that the people who are creating, the, 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 that it's affecting the content on the site. Mm-hmm. They own the site. 
they control when there's no such thing as free speech on right. privately owned websites. That's true. This is for the good of everyone yes. that wants to have an intelligent conversation anywhere. It's their responsibility if they're going to have comments to to tend that moderate garden. them. And yes. right. but isn't that a manpower issue? If you start, I, if you have the policy that you are going to moderate, then you have to, you have to do it for everything. So, so that's yes, fine. You do. And I do think that's fine. And now I will give the counterpoint, which is the the my particular favorite home of balanced debate on the web, and I've said this before mm-hmm. in this podcast is I'm bleep this one too. Is what I'm going to bleep this one too. <laughs> it's Metafilter. Yeah, Metafilter. Metafilter is, and Metafilter is not heavily moderated. It is. I think they have three or four full time moderators, mm-hmm. and they're in different parts of the world, so they take care of different hours of the day, and they are very, very good. They're very present. They delete things and explain. A whole bunch of comments were deleted because you people are all off the off the mark. This isn't. Please, no Mac versus PC debates. And in the end, what you end up reading, and I've read, I've been reading articles that disappeared halfway through. Mm -hmm. You know, when I went to reload, it had already been taken out. Yeah. Um, And they delete a lot of front page posts. They delete, I I don't know how many. I've had front page posts deleted for not holding to the rules of Metafilter. And I agreed with their reason after I read it. Um, It's just also all to the point of it is possible to moderate to get a real balanced debate. But you can't moderate forever uh, an article will still exist you know a year from now two years from now and people will still be commenting and it's, it's not going to well, be but the traffic on an article that's uh, a year old regardless of the traffic fails if, but, it's but, not the policy but, uh, if a, a tree... filter does a thing where they lock the thread yeah, right, after a certain it, period yes. of time that, i think that would it's be a couple of months or yes. something like that or... so that's a technology problem yeah like th- that that is um very clearly a technology problem and and the way i look at it is i, I look at this what pop's eye has changed and they're they're saying hey one they're saying one thing i think that i I mean i'm not going to pretend to put words in people's mouth but the excuse that they gave for killing comments doesn't hold up to it and i think this is another example of the decades-long battle of old school editorial and you know dead tree publications and the gravitas associated with each versus the kind of controlled semi-controlled chaos of the web right and and you know the fact that they had a toxic comment environment is unfortunate, but that that's you know they had if they had set up and said, "Hey, look, we haven't been paying attention to this for five years. We haven't invested in any kind of technology in this. We haven't spent time, energy, money, or thought on this, and it's really bad. So we're just going to turn it off. That's fine. That is totally fine. And if it is a manpower issue, and th- two to four full time moderators mm-hmm. is an expensive proposition. Or if if the study says that. If their reasoning is based on a scientific study and the idea, whether that what the study says it explicitly or not, is that you get influence in the comments from an article. You split the comments. A lot of sites do that. Split the comments. Right. So you have to click through to a separate forum or load them manually. And, you know, the thing is, is that the, the argument that the debate can't be managed is a right. bullshit argument. Right. I, and there are plenty of places on the web that it is managed. And... People aren't foaming at the mouth about having their comments deleted, or those who are get outed and, you know, taken care of. Yeah, this was I a, don't mean taken out to the back. Well, this is a plot no, no, that's, that's the right approach. Band, yeah. yeah, it was a plot point on the newsroom. Also, oh, was it? Yeah, Will McAvoy was very uh, in season one. He was he he was incensed by the the comments on their site. And well, this and is it, this well, is <laughs> if you want to crawl back. I love. Aaron Sorkin, if I'm graced with enough like wonderfulness for you to actually listen to this podcast, I will say I love everything you've ever done. But Aaron Sorkin has a very complicated relationship with the World <laughs> Wide Web, the internet, going yeah. all the way back to Sports yes. Night, exemplified deeply in the West Wing. <laughs> so, so I mean, he, so what's what's the un, the underlying problem with comments? Because like, the pop side thing is just an example. It seems to me that there's a overall lack of civility that has arisen on the internet. Yeah, it's it's I, I equate it to people to the if someone cut up in front of you in line, you wouldn't go, dude. You wouldn't do that. Maybe in New but, York. Yes, in New York, but that's all because we've all agreed not to shoot each other in New York. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> we got to that point. We're right. Uh, but in your car, you totally do it. Oh, the right. car is a wonderful thing. Right, the and, so, and the car, is an it's a shell that you're in. See, yeah. I try not to do it in the car because no, it makes it's bad. I, 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 hear, I, hear I hear swearing people all get, the time. People in are the car. uncivil between each other in cars for yes. the same reason I think that they're uncivil on the web is because they're protected. Yes. Well, and, and they're, they're and, distanced from the person that they're angry at 
And you if see a people, car, not if a people person. People in cars yeah. had to be accountable for their actions right. and what they said in cars. Well, that's a college humor skit. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Five guys walking down a hall. Right. Exactly. Nice turn, jackass. Uh, I hope you die. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think people feel totally protected. And the lack of civility, I mean, to call it a lack of civility is in and of itself it's way kind. underspinning how, <laughs> how, I mean, it's horrifying what goes on in the comment sections so of some places. How does, how does this problem solve? Is it just getting rid of anonymity or is it? I don't it, think it's getting rid of anonymity as it is as much as a thing that uh, most websites have the comments and they're just something that sits there. And, a, you know, a machine allows them to load and people to put them it's up. It's like the sewer for the article. Yeah. And I think that, and it feels like a sewer. And I think that we don't have enough websites that realize that proper moderation of those comments is the way to spark a lively debate, which is what the whole purpose of them is in the beginning. I mean, the, the, the thing we found, not that we're uh, some sort of magical comment okay. wonderland. Don't be mean to us, please. <laughs> um, is that is that if you engage with the people in the comments and you have conversations with them and you treat them like human beings and you expect them to behave like human beings, then then it kind of works. It works out. And I mean, we aren't substantially smaller than PopSci as Much a web s- property. Substantially small. Half size. Yeah. <laughs> comments per article. Comments per article. Yeah. Yes. But they're they're also so I I spoke to some people on the web after this cup ups, I think because I kind of took a stand on Twitter and said, Hey, look, this is this is they're throwing out something that can be incredibly valuable. Um and and have had interesting conversations with people at, at similar publications. And there is a concerted effort by specifically by the climate change deniers yes. and anti abortion people and, and intelligent design yeah. uh teachers. Uh, to go out and seek out Every publications like PopSci. Ad, yeah. and, no, no, it's, it's actually even publication by publication. Oh, okay. There's like, there are mailing lists that say, hey, there's an article here that we need to go get. Right. It's on AOL, on PopSci, on um, MSN, on CNN, on yeah. um, uh, uh, TED, TED Talks. Yeah. Like they go and attack TED Talk comments and it's a, it's a concerted thing, but it's very similar to the kind of human driven spam that you see on on other message boards, on other sites, so you see things like Man United football. Yeah, you know it's it's or or on the other side, you know people spamming Fox News. Yeah, and and you know skewing polls on right. cable news channels. Yeah. Absolutely, Baba Booey. Um, it's a tough problem. Well, what if what if what if how about this for a solution? What about what could there possibly be a wiki solution to the problem? I don't know about a wiki, but I mean, there's like, always I mean, what I mean is that the people donating their time to moderate a debate. Of course, what you then have yeah. is. The, the the evolutionary denying nut jobs becoming those. Wiki moderators. has its own problem of its yeah, own right, moderators. Exactly, and it, that's, exactly. There's no solution. How about just being having common sense and you know when you read comments, being able to filter and and think the, about the, well, that, the that, substance that, of the comments. That, I don't. But but the, yeah. the, there's a problem on the technology side too. Comments are essentially unchanged over the last ten years technologically. Right. Like all of the great meta moderation stuff that shows up on Facebook and Twitter, all of the people that are good at that stuff have gone to Facebook and Twitter to make Facebook and Twitter better places to participate. Oh right. So comments are just a flat threaded file of the most recent thing at the top. Right. So, or so that what that ends up happening is the people with the loudest voices end up seeing more and more right. or being seen more. Well, on, on sites like Reddit. The the thread is or it can be sorted linearly right. from time, or it could be the one with the most votes or I the most found, controversial. It's because 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 I'm a redditor and I frequent both Reddit and Metafilter, I find that their way of ordering comments, which is completely different, mm-hmm. Reddit's all upvotes. Well, you can that's, you, you can, can sort. sort by upvotes or time, or or sort by con- controversy. Okay, like, see so on you, on Metafilter, it is literally time, yeah. and you're starting at the earliest one and moving down. And I got so used to that at my first few weeks on Metafilter, I was like I can't parse this stuff at all. However, I sort by upvotes, and it means that when I click on a thing that's, you know, I wonder if this article, I wonder if this headline is actually true. I know that the top thing is likely to be the most useful information yeah. in the Reddit article, and I really appreciate. that. Well, that's what I want. Yeah, like if I if I'm looking at comments, I want to see, hey, somebody else took the time to go out. Vet this right. and and yes, it's correct. Or but no, the people vetting or, again, it could be the mobs. Totally could. It absolutely could. But Reddit, the, the while a very diverse yeah. community, uh, 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 the largest portion of the time seems to be properly vetted, as far as I've determined. I that's haven't done that's because people have a stake 
yeah. in, in that. I don't think Reddit is that diverse a community, though, just to be oh. clear. I mean, there's a strong liberal-leaning band. I guess and, when I say diverse, yes. Yeah. Well, and we all know that reality has a liberal bias. The internet is, uh, yeah, definitely uh, has a liberal bias. But I, I guess I think of, you know, I know that there are some really vicious trolls out there on Reddit. Yeah. Uh, and there are also some really balanced and super intelligent people. And I really absolutely place those at either end of a spectrum. And that's what I mean by diverse. Top is, I don't yeah, think yeah. that it's necessarily racially diverse or age diverse. I don't know what those figures are. I, I just, I think one of the things that Reddit has done really well is given people, the people who are willing to invest the time to make a community good. Right. The tools that they need to moderate that community. Mm -hmm. So there's the popularity vote popularity contest aspect of reddit that's great the upvotes and downvotes and then there's also another layer of people on top of each subreddit that say hey we're the ones who are keeping this conversation the directing this conversation so it goes the way we want to go and i think that's really important and there have been studies that say that you reach a snowball where you know people see an upvote and they click an upvote because right that's well, the populist thing and i mean there's probably a comments event horizon beyond which no it's beyond which the size <laughs> of the site gets so large that no intelligent conversation the can most exist. The most intelligent comment could be buried there because it, it's not reached that. Yeah, if I get, if you're going to go read through the comments, you are going to go read through them. I don't think that – I think there are a lot of different ways to sort, and giving the user a power to sort them in the way that they choose mm -hmm. is really good. But I don't think you should I, – I, I think what is going to be the most useful comment is going to change to whoever happens to be reading them. But I do think – one of the moderators – on uh, Metafilter, Cortex. I just remember her posting something in a very passionate discussion. And the passionate discussions on Metafilter happen to be, are often things like uh, <clears throat> the, the, the gender issues tend to be a very passionately debated subject. And also a place where humor might not be recognized as humor. <laughs> right. Right? Uh, emoticons don't always convey yeah. the full emotion. And at one point, Cortex swooped into a, a debate on gender that was getting very heated, and she wrote, um, a whole slew of comments going down this line have been deleted. If you, if you want to keep your comment in this post, don't pre-fuck them. <laughs> with this and that, and she listed these these parts of the argument. That's not going to stay. <laughs> well, I, and I mean, there's a there's a strong argument for that kind of visible upfront moderation. I mean, like, yeah. there's a there's tons of different theories about what what gun moderation is. Whether it's kind of invi the also invisible gentle Cortex hand. Was a female, and I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Actually, we'll, we'll Cortex find out. could be a man. I, I think I might be wrong about that. Sorry, Cortex. It's, but it's better. It's, it works either way. It does work either yeah. way. Right. <laughs> um, there should be more people. Do you think there are researchers and sociologists studying? The, I, ho I hope. I really hope they are. are. Studying comment culture and... Well, and, and also how it... And what systems work best. I, and, I and, must uh, say, I, in general, don't read comments on articles unless... I want to, like, unless it's a certain kind of article and I think, oh, I want to read some nut jobs take on this shit. I find and then that... I'll go in and read gleeful troll bait and watch people get unhinged. Yeah, when reading a lot so of to news. me, it's like watching wrestling. <laughs> when we're reading a lot of news, especially um, oh. something that's technical, I find that the comments are a great resource. Really? Incredible resource. Because context comes many times in the comments and yeah. not in the actual that's article. That's absolutely true. Especially, and I find on the web these days, more and more articles that would only be the introductory paragraphs of a New Yorker article. Yeah. Right? So they're like, this is blah, 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 blah. And then they'll give one more fact, and then they're done. And I'm like, that's, we're just getting started. Yeah. I want to know context. I want to know, yeah. Right. So and the then, internet's packed with that crap. Well, because the thing is, it's the thing, we've talked about this before. It's yeah. the guy who designed the Brooklyn Bridge watches the story in the local news about the Brooklyn Bridge. He's like, but these, guys, these jackasses got it completely wrong. <laughs> yes. Here's the 15 things that, that they didn't get to. And, and that, like, being able to get that extra depth and having that, like, just the, the act of placing it on the same page as the vaunted editorial written by the, the, the gods from the Mount yes. is, is a powerful thing. And by I, discarding I that, that, we I grew lose. that in theory. Now, it, 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 but you have to maintain it. Yes. Is it worth getting worked up about the comments? I totally think it is. I think that I take personal umbrage at a network of people attempting to deny Well, yes, the, the, the 
I, I that think, type of gaming. I the think system. that is absolutely gaming. The system is absolutely something that is worth getting worked up over, because yeah, it's worth getting worked over. Well, worked up over. And at the same time, the people for for a fairly long time, I was in the don't read the comments school, which is a, which is as somebody who puts video of himself on the internet is a healthy thing to do. I never read the comments about myself. It's I a, can I? You know what um, Chris Hardwick calls it cutting. Well, we don't we don't have <laughs> somebody has to read the comments or else they'd just be all Nazi stuff on our site. But yeah. um. The, the like the fact that I don't remember where I was going with it now. I'm sorry. I started thinking about cutting myself. <laughs> I was like, wow, I'd much rather do that than read YouTube comments all day. You don't read comments about yourself on the web as much as I, you I, can so. I, I was a, I was of the school that yeah, wait, comments were a complete waste of time. And then we launched Tested in 2010, and actually had a community that was that was excited about the content we were making and wanted willing participants yeah. and actually were upset that we lacked some of the features that other sites in our network had and wanted more opportunity to contribute. And this was a new experience for me. Yeah. Um, and, and by normal people saying, no, I'm not going to deal with the trolls. I'm going to go to Twitter where there's a block button or Facebook and have those same conversations on thing, Facebook and Twitter feeds that are linked to those articles rather than attached to them has fractured those conversations a ton, and it means that they just don't happen as much. And it also means that the only people left on the comments are the marginalized weirdos right. that don't believe in things that are pretty obviously true. <laughs> um, and I think by not by not taking time to participate in those conversations and not hit the report abuse button or the thumbs down button or whatever, we're contributing to the problem even by inaction. Mm. Um, so I, I think I think you know good people should spend time in the comments. I do too. Uh, you, you're, uh, you, and your point about good people spending time in the comments is well taken. Um, it's a it's a. I don't think you should spend eight hours a day in the comments. No, part, no, 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 it's no. part of the but, responsibility. But, you know, I, I I have definitely thought of piping in here and there, and sometimes don't because I think ah oh, this is just going to be you know I'm pissing into. But the you're wind. kind of a special case too. Uh, I am. I yeah. have to be. I have to be careful. I mean, I, I'm sure you have all sorts of anonymous, sexy girl 420 and all I, your special I, I, character I don't. accounts. I'll tell you, I have a comment story, which is early on in MythBusters. Uh, I was reading the comment on a YouTube video that I'd been on, and someone said. Adam Savage begins every goddamn sentence with the word actually. <laughs> and that comment went into my cerebral cortex and oh, yeah. infected me like a virus for years. When was the last time you said actually at uh, the start of a sentence? Actually. Uh, <laughs> well, it's good that you don't because yeah. that would be really annoying. Adam. It would be. Yeah. And it, it, I don't start every sentence like that but there is i'm there and i realized the power of that like you read the wrong thing and you won't be able to get it out of your head and i don't need anybody's other voices in my head when i'm trying to appear on camera right. i gotta be me and, well and, and just to be clear we have it pretty easy oh we we're do. men Women have, I feel like, much, much Actually, harder road sorry, to hoe This is another place internet. I wanted to go. We still have a little time, right? We have as much time as it's the internet. Okay. This is the other place where, actually, we've been discussing Actually, it from a civility standpoint. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we might as well be standing in the library of the club with some cigars. Because, yes, being white men-ish, we have every advantage. <laughs> Just men, at least. <laughs> men. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Norm. Sorry, Norm. We have what, what my female friends go through on the web. Uh, is something that I cannot understand. I mean, literally, I it is you can, it, that is my even, privilege as to, as yes. a, as a yeah. dude. To empathize. I is cannot difficult. understand what they go through. I cannot parse it. I cannot experience it. Um, and I'm talking about like friends of mine in the skeptical community who get daily rape and death threats. Yeah. In their email and in comments on every article that they write, including uh, people posting their home addresses, phone numbers, personal yeah. information, identifying information, everything. It's this is that's a totally different thing than what we've been talking yeah. about. And this is absolutely stalking, abuse, uh, Mo monstrous behavior, monstrous behavior. Yeah. And it's it's something that's rampant on the Web. And when we're talking about people being protected and anonymous it's it is the, one of the things that's upsetting me the most these days well it's it's the it's the thing when i when google came out and said hey if you want to participate in youtube comments we would encourage you to attach your real name to it with your google plus profile i don't like google plus very much i don't use it very often i think that that is a wonderful thing because i feel like when people have their actual name attached to something well, the then they behave a little bit differently absolutely yes well this is one of the things i really liked about twitter at the very beginning mm -hmm. and still do is that because when 
I get very few super negative comments or even abusive comments on Twitter. And just to be clear, always welcome constructive criticism. Always welcome constructive even, even criticism. Even if you're rude with it. I'm okay if the... If, Absolutely. We, we are not... We, we make mistakes all the time. A hundred percent. But... but um, but Twitter, because people know that I'm going to, res- I'm could respond. To You're going to see tweet. it. Yeah, there is a level of civility on Twitter in general, at least in my experience, that I find really refreshing well, on the web. And because it's because each person's experience on Twitter and Facebook too, for that matter, is is tailored to them. You, if somebody doesn't like you, the only way they're going to see you is if somebody else that they follow retweets you. And right? they face the repercussion of the block. Right. Which means not only do you not see their, they can't see what you post. I block a lot. I block a I, lot. I will tell you I block a lot. when so, If someone says something really shitty, and I don't mind being disagreed with. I get disagreed with a lot. And, you know, for instance, when I posted that Popsy article, I immediately got a rebuttal and I posted that too. And yeah. that's like, I'm happy to show both sides of the debate and still say that I'm not sure where I fall and this conversation is part of... Mm-hmm coming to that right but uh definitely when people say crappy things i totally right it's not it's it's not worth the time like when if you have a limited amount of time to spend on stuff like twitter and talking to people why spend it with people who are pissed off at you and don't like you when you can spend it with somebody who's going to be excited to talk to you exactly um so yeah i guess that's this this is i i think in the end that comments on the web are going to be something that in like 10 years will be like well can you mad remember what it used to be like (laughs) Like, there will be a way in which this thing, it doesn't get settled, but at least it gets understood and perhaps the, the right solutions become more universal. Well, and, and just to be clear, if you want to go and have a horrible conversation with awful people, there will always be places to do that. <laughs> like, that, that, is, yes. that is a thing. On your particular you, subreddit. You can go you to like, 4chan, 4chan, wherever you want. It's all there. Yeah, it's all, I mean, and I know there's lovely conversations that happen on 4chan. I don't want to denigrate oh, no, everything no, no, to do with 4chan. But... Um, but like, there's. Please don't hurt me, Four Chan. No, we're we're cool, right, guys? <laughs> we're cool, right? Um, totally cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna bleep that part out too. This is gonna be 40 minutes of bleeps this episode. Um, no, I mean it's it's just it, it, like there has to be. It, people need to treat people better yes. as a whole. And, the and, world and gets worse when you treat everybody feel like less shit. like they need to be right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's the big one. Well, it's not a problem for me because I'm always right. It's but true. Well, actually, it doesn't matter if I'm right as long as they're wrong. Right. <laughs> That's Z- the other half. Zero sum correct. <laughs> I guess that'll do it for us this week. Thank um, you, guys. Yeah, thanks for listening. As always, leave your feedback in the comments <laughs> below. <laughs> waiting for that. Um, Somebody will read them, not us. Yeah. No, we'll read them. Oh, you'll read them. Yeah, I'll read them. I'll send you the good bits. Send me the good bits. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. No credit card is required to start building your website today. When you sign up for Squarespace, use the offer code UNTITLED to get 10% off and support this show. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring Still Untitled. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. I say the hell with those places, by the way. Let me just explain what every real chef in San Francisco knows is that the only excellent, truly over-the-top I, burrito in San Francisco... Hold on, I'm going to have to bleep all this out because I don't want anybody to know. ...comes from... Uh, El Farolito on 24th and Mission. I totally bleeped that.